Yo yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 2020 League Racing video. Today we're back with PSGL after a week break. Uh, last time around we got a 1-2 Mercedes in Mexico uh, where I won the race, managed to break out of DRS quite early on. Um, this week we are obviously trying to do the same, get another 1-2 uh, and dominate the race basically. Um, but range short, not, very, uh, not a very good track for me so I think it's going to be a lot harder to do that this time around, but still, we're going to try and do our best, of course. Uh, heading out for my first qualifying one lap, uh, only looking to go through on one set of tires, like usual in Q1. Um, as it's a very short track, we can do two push laps in a row, uh, as we don't really need to recharge the rest. We can just keep pushing on uh, the lap after our first push lap as well. Uh, currently, we are standing P1 in the Drivers' Championship after missing five races due to Formula E, as you can see here. So yeah, uh, we finished P3 with the fastest yeah, lap in uh, USA, which is a bit unfortunate, we chose the wrong strategy, but um, yeah, still leading the championship after five missed races, so that's a pretty decent season so far, only finished on the podium in every race, uh, and we're looking to do the same again today around the Bahrain short so uh, just warming up my tires preparing my lap uh, I might do only one push lap depending on point eight so yeah I might only do one push lap on this set of tires uh, depending on how good my first lap is but if it's um, if I'm not 100% sure it will be enough uh, I'll just do two in a row as don't think we will really use this set of tires. Maybe at the start of Q3, but I'm not sure yet. But anyway, let's start our lap. A wide entry into turn one, opening the DRS as we head down the main straight. Top speed of around 330 kph. As I head into turn one, 332 kph braking just before the 100 meters down to second gear. Not really enough minimum speed. I think I braked a bit too early as well. So not ideal. Uh, Missed the curb a little bit, which cost me some rotation. But anyway, not too bad in the end anyway, as we did uh, 21.477. In Q3, we're looking to do a low point three at least. But Q1 has a little bit less grip, of course. So not too bad um, in general anyway. As we head through this flat out right section, braking hard to keep the rear under control through there. As you can see, back end stepping out. As uh, you're asking a lot from the rear tires, so there are two tens up on Domenico Lovecce as we head into the final uh, corner. Missed the apex a little bit, not enough minimum speed, poor exit as well. So we're gonna push on for another lap as it's only a 57.7. Um, P3 it is currently, and I'm gonna push on for another lap into turn one. Slightly better this time, I would say. A little bit more minimum speed, a little bit more exit speed, half a ten top. Going into the next right-hander. This time we do get the curb on the inside. And we are over half a tent up as we head into sector 2. Four handers down on Bari uh, going into the second sector. Down to fourth gear. Short shifting to fifth. And now we are one tent up heading into the flat out right section. And again let's see if we can keep the rear end slightly more stable this time. I felt like slightly too low on minimum speed. But there's a lot of time in the last corner um, as I had very poor minimum speed through there so we can make up a lot of time here which we do you can see Delta going down extremely aggressive 1.7 tens now coming across the line it's a 57.550 which will be more than enough to get into Q2 um, as you can see here Next in yeah. like so, in a second yeah. uh, this is gonna be safely true um, well, maybe it's a bit close, but... As you can see there, P1, uh, but quite a bit. Uh, Flores Wires, Jan Akinsi, Tom97, VSR Andy and Dylan Warren are out in Q2. Cold, cold, yeah, I saw. Cold. And now going into Q2, going Not out on mediums. Um, I'm trying to get into Q3 just on mediums, which is going to be extremely tough, of course, but it also depends on how many people are going to try it. And the alternate strategy is quite a popular one around the Bahrain short. So the aim is to get into Q3 on mediums and then get pole as well, of course. Um, and Top 10 with the first lap, I'll just stick to that. 
a Williamson Softs. Is it Matteo? Going for yeah, B11, B11, I think so. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, aim to get into Q3 and mediums and then get Paul in Q3 on the softs, of course, as in Q2. Whatever lap time you set in Q2 is um, going to be the tire you have to start on if you get into Q3. So uh, if I call off on these mediums, then I only want to do really one lap in Q2. So I have the freshest tire as possible in Q3. Because uh, I don't want to add any tire wear uh, extra as medium to soft. Uh, it's a strategy, but it's still quite tricky. Yeah, I'll meet myself, yeah, I'll myself now. And it's quite tricky with tire wear uh, going medium to soft. It's going to be a 100% race as well as Bahrain short. It's quite short, so um, the laps will be equal to the long track. So a 100% race is pretty equal to a 50% race around Bahrain short. But now starting the lap again on the mediums, really looking to find the limit straight away on the first lap, which is hard because we've just done a Q1 on softs, of course. Going into turn one, got it nicely on the apex. A little bit of a wiggle on the exit as I'm struggling for traction. Going through here, got the curb on the inside nicely. A little bit of wheel spin, a little bit too much, I think so. As we do at 21.671, which is pretty good on those mediums. Going into the next left-hander, missed the apex a little bit, so probably a little bit low on minimum speed. Now, through this next flat-out right-hander, um, a lot less grip on those mediums through here, but balance looks very nice uh, on those mediums going through there. Uh, 43.885, one ten down on Philip Prejeneau, who set that lap time on the softs and braked um, just before the last corner. A little bit of a moment out of the last corner, so not an ideal lap, but... A balance looked very nice on those mediums, which is looking good for the race as well, uh, of course, as we're going to start on those mediums, as we're currently P3. You can see we got through easily. Um, Barry beat us by 300 on those medium tires. Um, Danny Moreno just behind us in P6. So uh, very, very nice that we managed to get through on mediums. Alvar Carrison crashed as his wheel disconnected. Um, so he got through in Q3, but he can't drive because his car was broken. So, uh, Valentin, Bruffer, uh, Josh, Ido, Omega the Show, and Timon Schutte all out in Q2. Oh, they also try to get into Q3 and mediums as Elson's strategy is so powerful um, that it's probably better to start P11 on mediums than start P3 or P4 on softs. But anyway, let's head into Q3 now. A 57.603. I didn't really manage to get a clean lap on my first new set of softs. Um, Barry going for three runs in Q3, which means he has no f new tires for the race. Uh, but obviously he's going to have a much bigger chance for Paul with three new, new sets of tires compared to uh, me and Danny going for two sets, as we're really just looking to aim for a race pace. But obviously we're going to give away track position if we don't nail this lap. Uh, 21.339 as I said earlier, low point three is what we're aiming for. A little bit of hesitation on the turn in so that's not ideal once again one tend up as uh, Barry has a 53 57.3 uh, uh, currently uh, going into the final sector now we're two hundreds down going into the final corner usually we're pretty good in the final corner and it didn't look too bad but it was just a little bit under the limit coming across the line now it's gonna be a 57.383 and now I'm going to give it everything I have in this final lap. Um, braking, 100 meters, once again, a little bit later than on those mediums, of course. Minimum speed looked pretty good, exit looked pretty good, so we're 200 up going into this next right-hander. Uh, really searching for front grip, grip there in that right-hander, but we managed to get through there pretty nicely. We're exactly equal to Barry going into the second sector, braking. 60 meters, forward gear, less hesitation than last time around, but we shouldn't forget rear tires are dropping off at this point as well, as it's the second push lap in a row, but we're not going to need these tires anymore anyway. Fifth gear, just on the limit on that exit, but we're losing time to our previous lap as our softs are dropping off. We're 1000s away, going into the final corner, we're giving it our everything, a little bit of understeer, this time we were a little bit close to the limit, a little bit over it as the rear broke away on the exit, and it's going to be... P2 for now, but our teammate Danny Moreno is still on a lap, um, on a second push lap as well on the set of tires, 
and he is improving. He currently has a 57.506 and as you can see in a second, Louis Welch goes P3 as our teammate Danny Moreno out of the final corner, opens the DRS. You can see on the steering wheel it's green and he is coming across the line P2 four thousands faster than us. So we're starting P3. Um, you can see there second and third sector were just not there on my final lap but the first sector was quite a big improvement. Um, Barry got pole uh, but he used that extra set of tires so he's not gonna have new or new softs um, for that final stint and we will. Uh, our teammate Danny Moreno also won't have new a new set of tires um, for the final stint. Uh, I'm not sure about everyone else but I'm sure we are one of the few that has a new set of softs for the final stint of the race. But anyway let's head into it starting on mediums now behind Barry Burman and our teammate Danny Moreno five red lights and away we go you can see Louis Welch gets an insane start of course he's on the pad so he's always gonna get a better start than us going into turn one three wide uh, behind Barry Boromant and now going into turn two you can see it's three wide so I decided very late to just back out of it as didn't want to have an incident early on there 57 laps to go and Danny and Louis touch uh, we take profits from that but now we're already one second behind Barry so in those next two laps we really have to push on to try and get the DRS back because if not then it's gonna be a lot uh, a lot more tough of a race if we do not manage to um, stay in the DRS so next two laps are gonna be very important um, see I'm pushing really hard now both with ERS and on tires six tenths now so we've brought it back quite a bit as we head into the final corner, five, six tenths now. So we've already managed to pull back four tenths. As Ruben Vallejo on the softs um, on P3, Dominic Lovecci in P4. So some people on the softs. Um, gonna be very interesting to see how their pace is at the start. I think it's gonna be a lot faster as the softs is a very good race style around here. So. Um, yeah, if uh, I, I have a decision to make in the next half a lap, uh, am I going to let him go? I reckon I'm going to let Ruben go. Exactly, as you can hear me say there, Ruben seems to be a lot faster on those softs. So, they are on a completely different strategy and there's no point in fighting them if they push really hard. So... Yeah, I'll let Ruben, Ruben go on the main straight. So yeah, you can hear me say there again, Ruben got such a better exit out of that right-hander. Just a lot more grip on those softs. Uh, of course, we will get back later on in the race. But for now, it's smarter to let him go and um, play our own game at the moment. Uh, Dominic Lovecchio, we might let him go as well uh, in a few laps time if he's still going to be faster. The softs are going to be faster basically for the wall first and as they're just a very good race tire but that's exactly why we want to have them very late on and why it's so good to have a new set as we just want to do as much laps as possible on them uh, as we now open our rear for the first time Dominic Lovecchi two tenths behind now so we might let him go as well our teammate Danny Moreno back into P5 um, after that little incident with Louis Welch in turn 3 so Dominic Lovecchi currently fastest lap of the race, so clearly the soft runners are quite a bit faster at this point. Uh, I think the delta is around half a second, maybe a little bit more per lap. Um, so that's quite a lot of course, but we just have to stick within the RS. As now, coming out of the final corner, Dominic Lovecchi is going to use his ERS. We're not. We're just going to let him go, uh, give him a little bit of track position away, but we need to... Mm, um, basically get the tires as far as possible into the first stint so um, yeah I'm gonna save my ERS and tires for later on in the race so we can then uh, fight back basically we now go into uh, or at the end of lap 20 um, you can see Barry Bormand a good 1.6 seconds ahead of us uh, and he managed to uh, pull away from the soft runners a bit as they start to drop off now pit window is pretty much opened for the soft runners as I go past Dominic Lovecchi again nothing happened in those basically 15 laps as all I did was save tires and uh, save my fuel as well save ERS so he can pound later on um, in the race as now 
Lightning up behind Ruben Vallejo again. Um, and Parry, 1.3 seconds ahead as we manage to close the gap again a little bit with the DRS and the help of ERS as well. And Ruben might pull into the pit uh, at the end of this lap, I'm not sure. I think Barry is going to get the arrest from a ghost car. No, oh, never mind. So yeah, Ruben's still pushing on. You can see him using ERS out of that corner. So I'm probably not going to go for a move here on the main straight as it will cost too much ERS. Um, I'm just going to stay behind for one more lap. And maybe we can do something next lap. Or maybe he will pit next lap as well. As some soft runners might pull in the, into the pits. Not yet, not yet. Uh, they all decide to go for a few laps longer um, as we head into turn one. Ruben goes a little bit wide and then you can see a little bit of oversteer as well. Probably struggling with the rears at this point um, as the softs are just dropping off. You can see again uh, softs dropping off. Ruben has, is lacking traction out of that uh, turn three corner. Any time now they might extend for the train still. Uh, should be in the next four laps or something. Sure, as you can hear Ben say, soft runners are looking to pit between now and four to five laps, depending on how long these used softs can last. Uh, everyone outside of the top ten uh, started or mediums or hards. So, yeah, everyone basically knows they want to be in that, uh, on the softs in the final stint. Uh, Ruben pulls into the pits, and now we've got a <laughs> job on our hands. We need to close. Ruben as well, yeah. A right, 1.5 second gap. gap. As you can hear me say, time to close this gap. Going into turn 1, it's 1.3 seconds now with the help of DRS. And we've got 89% battery, so we really have to use that in the next few laps to close um, that gap and get back into the DRS, which is crucial. Quite a little bit low on minimum speed there, as I had a little bit of understeer. Um, but yeah, those mediums are dropping off as well, of course. Mediums are not a very good race tire. Hards are extremely bad as well so 1.1 second now uh, I'm gonna use my ERS again in this flat out right section um, or right hander I should say and then now it's gone down to one second so we've closed already half a second just on this lap and DRS detection zone is gonna be right here and it, the cap is only 9 tenths so that's very good uh, back into the DRS but I don't expect to Barry uh, give up that easily 57. As I put my personal best of the race. Uh, Barry used a lot of ERS on this main straight, so we might be out of DRS again uh, on the in the middle sector. I'm not sure. But uh, it just depends on how we can take this next section. I got a little bit of understeer on that turn one. So, again, I'm out of DRS, but we still have a lot of battery. So, looking to bring it down again just to under one second. So you be fine getting to Yom up there. So yeah, it's back up to 1.1 second, but uh, we're going to push again in this next section with the ERS and on the tires. So we're looking to get DRS again. Coming through here now. Uh, one second exactly as we put on our ERS exactly at the right time, really early on. No wheel spin and back to 9 tenths we are. As again, I expect Barry to use some of his overtake on this exit, but I'm going to do the same this time. I'm not, I'm not going to get tricked again. As uh, so we get the DRS, um, again I put a personal best in this race, so it shows how hard we're pushing. And this time around we're looking to take turn 1 slightly better and stay within the DRS zone. Um, which we do, the DRS detection was just right there uh, before turn 3. So a little bit of an awkward place, but again I use some overtake and now we're definitely within uh, the DRS and we're looking to keep it that way as now we have a few laps deeper into the race uh, you can see I've just been recharging my battery um, for our final soft run we're looking to probably pit at the end of this lap you can see the tire wear indicator has turned bright red so uh, we've got a 5.3 seconds cap to oh my god it's Joe so we should be fine Danny Moreno our teammate uh, went into the pits at the end of lap 31 so Yeah, tire wear for Danny, uh, 5% on that used set of softs. We are coming into the pit at the end of, at the end of this lap as we're uh, scheduled for 76% tire wear. 
uh, before I come into the pits. Um, the risk of a puncture is at 75, so I don't want to go any longer uh, than this. And as I said before, we want to do as much laps as possible on those softs as well. So, trying to get close to Bari into the pit lane. Oh my god, Joe really pushed hard with his ERS on the in-lap. Uh, so he can could minimize uh, the undercut people we're gonna get. But now, coming into the pits, softs go on. And uh, we're at a 4.4 second gap to Oh my god, it's Joe. And we just come out ahead, so that's perfect. I was a bit surprised he was so close as we had a 4.4 second gap. So, um, yeah, I was very confused actually that he actually made it to us uh, or ghosted into us. As I felt like 4.4 second gap would be more than enough. So maybe we went a little bit of a slow pit, exit, uh, pit entry, but I'm not sure. But anyway, we're clear of everyone. Louis Welch, I think, went into the pits at the end of lap 30. So he went for a massive undercut and you can see he's only 1.4 seconds behind us. But he's going to struggle uh, on the softs towards the end. But now... We have a full battery, we have a lot of fuel remaining, you can see plus 3 laps as uh, we get the DRS on this middle section. We've got new softs on of course, so Barry on the used. So we should have a little bit of an advantage. Of course there's only one lap done on those, um, so it's not going to be major. But every little bit helps of course, and that's why I didn't do that extra lap in Q3. Um, even though it's a, a 1 minute lap, uh, there's not going to be a lot of tire wear, but still. Uh, it's a little bit of time um, that we're gonna gain 4% uh, 4 to 5% tie wear as now we're gonna go for the move DRS not using any overtake as it's gonna be a clear and easy pass into turn one and now we have to close that six second gap to Dominico Lovecchia who's on the mediums of course slightly older mediums so um, yeah we have to close that gap uh, as fast as possible and not use too much ERS uh, as we want to use that ERS uh, to get past them and not um, to close that gap. So now, going towards halfway into lap 38, we're 1.2 seconds behind Dario Lemulo. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the tire life or tire age of all people ahead of me are. I think they all went into the pits uh, more or less at the same lap. Uh, count maybe one lap different, so it's not gonna be major. But now we're gonna get DRS no, for the first time. From Lamolo, just let me know, or from anyone up front. So yeah, five tens now coming out of the final corner, and I'm straight away gonna go for it. On goes the overtake button. Gonna use that slipstream to my advantage. Personal best uh, lap so far, 59.4. Going into the third one, breaking slightly later. Little bit of a dive bomb and not the cleanest I, I think I hit him a little bit um, so not my cleanest move but at the same time um, the contact model allows it a little bit so could have been a cleaner move but um, I think Dario didn't mind too much as he's in a completely different strategy so um, yeah as you can see there uh, Dario not battling Barry too hard as well in that middle section and now Dominico Lovecce is up next um, on the mini as well. You can see Ruben has a 3 second time penalty. So, um, he is, I think no one in this train is going to battle Stuart as there is 17 laps remaining. 18 laps remaining actually. And, well, uh, all, they, they probably all know that they're not going to win this race on this kind of strategy. Uh, I think mainly it's going to be between me, Barry, Louis and Danny Moreno at this point as we're taking maximum advantage of the slipstream we just managed to uh, overtake on the green flag I think so it was a little bit weird um, as it kept changing between yellow green and yellow flag so um, I think it was from a lapped car I'm not sure but anyway we managed to get the move done um, Ruben now uh, up next who has a three second time penalty as I said before and we still have quite decent ERS levels as well. We got past all of these cars without using too much ERS. Uh, so that's really good. Still two laps remaining full as well. Uh, reason I, I fueled up for so much extra. It looks like a lot extra. But because one lap extra fuel while on this track is far, far less than one lap extra fuel while on Spa. Um, so plus four or five laps is not that much. It's quite equal to like plus two laps of fuel. 
uh, around Spa, for example, as I had to use a little bit of extra ERS to get past Alvaro as well, as Barrio was threat threatening me uh, a little bit into turn 1. He was using all of his battery to try and have a go at me as well, so I had to use a little bit extra, and now I have 55% ERS remaining, and I'm, I'm actually absolutely going to bolt it now, as I want to get out of this DRS from everyone behind me. So I'm going to use everything I have, every percentage of ERS and tire life and fuel to get out of this DRS as soon as possible. You can see 9 tenths to Bari as we go through this next right-hander. Little bit of a moment on exit, absolutely on the limit. We're absolutely bolting it now. And going towards the DRS detection zone, it's 1.1 seconds. So just not enough. And it. as you hear Ben say, Barry yeah, flashing into the last corner. On the line. And on the line we have 6% as we put the fast lap of the race. 1.3 second gap now. Actually it's going to be 1.4 heading into turn 1. So absolutely perfect that we managed to get out of DRS once again. Like uh, two weeks ago around Mexico. Uh, it's making our life a lot easier. And uh, basically avoiding any tactical bat battles in the last um, few laps. So... Our teammate Danny Moreno still in P6 behind Louis Welch. Uh, obviously, he has he still has DRS uh, probably um, from undercar, so he managed to recharge his battery completely. And you can see now he is right behind Barry after uh, he was be able to use his battery very efficiently in clean air, closing the gap to Barry. So very good job from him um, on those soft tires to manage to close that gap to Barry, get back into the DRS zone uh, to Barry. And now he's only 1.5 cents behind. if he starts playing games. Into the last corner. As you can hear me say to Danny there, wouldn't be surprised if Barry starts playing games at the DRS detection uh, point. Because whoever gets DRS out of the last corner has a very good chance to lead into turn one. So, as you can see... Yeah, he tried, but I got him. Nice. As I predicted, Barry did try, but uh, Danny still managed to stay behind at the DRS detection point. And now, you can see P1, P2 once again, as we head into the final corner, turn 1. Danny leading by 3 tenths, but it, it is probably going to be enough, as uh, he has managed to... Recharges ERS slightly more, I think so. Not a lot, as he only had DRS at 4 to 5 laps to go. Uh, and around such a short track, he won't regain a lot of ERS in those 4 or 5 laps. But, going into this next right-hander, he's still leading. So there's going to be no more DRS zones uh, in the rest of the lap. And that means he's going to be quite safe heading into uh, the final corner. And... You can see tire wear, we're doing pretty well, um, especially in the final 10 laps. I didn't push as hard anymore, as I just want to keep it safe, keep it clean. Um, I knew I had Let's an go, advantage. Go. Let's and go. going oh, across the line in a row. the second 1-2 in a row and the third of the season, uh, as me and Daniel have only done four races together in PSGL, and we've got three 1-2 finishes, so amazing job from both of us. Um, so yeah. Big shout out to Danny as well for driving such a phenomenal race. Um, now we are leading the standings by even more. I think we're leading both constructors. And I was already leading the drivers, but now we're leading by seven points. As I was leading by one point. Point um, gain is a little bit less than from the actual F1 uh, point gain. You know, we get 16 points for a win, uh, 12 points for P2 and 10 points for P3. So that means we're leading by 7 points now. So that's amazing. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this league racing video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, I've also created a YouTube clips channel. Uh, I will leave a link in the description if you want to see clips from league racing, world records, overtakes, anything. Uh, I will leave it or post it up there. So make sure to check that out as well. Um, anyways, that was it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And see you guys next time. Ciao.